let's listen to the verse number 11 and onwards. Allah yabda'ul khalqa thumma yu'iduhu thumma ilayhi turja'oon. Allah originates the creation, then he will create it again, then to him you are to be returned. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ يُبْلِسُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ On the day when the hour, Kiyama, the day of judgment, will take place, the guilty will be taken aback in grief and despair. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ مِنْ شُرَكَائِهِمْ شُفَعَاءُ وَكَانُوا بِشُرَكَائِهِمْ كَافِرِينَ They will have no intercessors from among their so-called partners of Allah, comma, and they themselves will reject their such partners. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَتَفَرَّقُونَ And the day when the hour, Kiyama, the day of judgment, will take place underscore it will be on the day that they will turn into separate groups. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَهُمْ فِي رَوْضَةٍ يُحْبَرُونَ Then, those who had believed and had done righteous deeds underscore they will be in a garden, extremely delighted. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ فِي الْعَذَابِ مُحْبَرُونَ As for those who had disbelieved and rejected our verses and the meeting of the hereafter, they will be brought for punishment. فَسُبَقَ so verse number 11 through 16, we hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah has created things first and he's going to recreate them and they will all be returning to him. So as we know, the trumpet will be blown and first time when we are created, we are all born from Adam creation and then everybody was born with the, um, what's you call the birthing process. And then the day of judgment will be established and you'll be so mujrimun and they will be in the grief stricken and despair but, uh, you know why we call in uh, shaitan iblis it's uh, iblis comes from the one which is hopeless and desperate and grief stricken that is iblis yalbisul mujrimun they will be grieved and stricken with the helpless and hopelessness walam yakun lahum min shurakaihim and there will be no one will be able to intercede for them like these idols they are worshiping as god and those who are offering to these un uh, uh, or you call the false gods what they call the fire or the nature of the creature shifa'u they will not be able to intercede for them wakanu bi shurakaihim kafirin and they themselves will reject their such partners in other words uh these idols or the false gods will be given power by God to come and testify and they will say that we have nothing to do with these people who worshipped us because we were not God and we never wanted to be God. And then the day of judgment will be established. That is known in Arabic as Qayyama. Qayyama means the day of judgment. Qayyama means Qaim, the one which is to be established. In Urdu, we use the word Qaim, the standing. The Qiyama is from the Sa'a, the moment or the hour. Uh, and that day, they will be all separated groups, means the believers and the non-believers. Today, when we are disbelievers and believers are together, that day, they will be separated by their faith. And this is something very important. People might be rich, powerful, strong, and healthy with the children and the love and wealth and everything in the world. And in the day of judgment, the, the distinction will not be between rich and poor, it will be between faithful and non-faithful, the people who believe and those who did not believe. That will be the separation on that day of judgment. And those who believe and just not believe, then they did the righteous deed. And they will be in the enlightened or delighted in the gardens of heaven, an extremely happy 
Yahubarun. They will be so much delighted that they cannot describe. The worldly life, when we will look back according to hadith and other verses of Quran, it will look like a moment past, which is look such a long and such a stretched life. But when we wake up in the morning after sleeping at night, we don't even recall eight hours have passed. And this is how the human life will be. When we will rise up from our graves, we'll be asked how long you were in the grave, and we'll say maybe hour or maybe certain moments or certain days or half a day or a day or so, because we have no idea of time and space. And those who denied, those who did the denial and they lied. Ayatina of our our verses mean they denied and lied that this is the rejection. Uh, our, our verses and the meeting in Arabic means meeting in the hereafter they will be in the punishment which will be brought over and encircling and, and, and will be surrounding them now the next uh, after this matter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now giving advice then what should we do as a Muslim as a believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying so, proclaim Allah, as purity, from shirk, when you see the evening and when you see the morning. وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَشِيًّا وَحِينَ تُظْهِرُونَ And to him be praise in the heavens and the earth, and in the afternoon and when you entered the time of Zah, soon after the decline of the sun towards west. يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَيُحْيِي الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا وَكَذَلِكَ تُخْرَجُونَ He brings out the living from the dead, and brings out the dead from the living, and gives life to the land after it is dead. And in similar way you will be brought out from graves. So verse number 17 and 18 have a little explanation. There's subhanallah, glory be to Allah. Hina tumsuna wa hina tusbahun. When this is, masa is means evening in Arabic, subh is the morning. So whenever you have evening and the morning. So this is reference to the prayer time. Even though in this revelation time they were not obligated to make the salah, but this is what it is written here that one should make salah and the fajr and the dawn and also in the evening after sunset, which is Asr, Maghrib, and Isha when the sun is setting. Uh, uh, yeah, for him belong the praises in the heaven and the earth. And in the time of the afternoon and of the time of after sun is declining. So this reflects the five times prayer. This is one verse here, and the other verse is in Surah uh, Bani Israel where talk about Quran does not say you have a five times prayer. Quran talks about the timing, not because of the numbers. As the sun, uh, as the dawn breaks, that's the first prayer. And when the sun rises up, after the sun rises, that's the second prayer is the Zohar. And then after the sun passes the mid of the day, which is the Zawal, which is 12 noon or in the peak in the center of the earth. And after that is Zohar. And after this, because now sun is on the decline side. And that's where the Asr, when the afternoon, and then there's a sunset, and then after the dark. So these are the five prayers of reference. And this is what is uh, to be understood from that. يخرج الحي من الميتة He brings out life from the dead. As we know, when, when we put a seed in the in the ground or we see that nothing is there and it comes to life. ويخرج الميتة من الحي And he brings out dead from the living. ويحي الأرض بعد موتها And he brings life to the earth after it is died out. As we see the spring and after rain and water that the plants are coming out. وكذلك تخرجون And this is how he brought out from the will be bringing out from your graves that you will not even realize that you see the cycle of existence and the plant and flower and plantation and food and nourishment as it is uh, and the other creatures so you would be brought back to the life as these are done so we do not get surprised Allah saying that you do not get surprised when you see that the seasonal cycle happen in front of you the dead plants or dead earth become to life this is how you will be back to, into life and let's listen to the Next verse is that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the creation of the human. You see, Allah gave the example of nature and now it's coming the example of the human. 
وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ إِذَا أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ تَنْتَشِرُونَ It is among his signs that he has created you from dust, then soon you are human beings scattered around. And it is among his signs that he has created for you wives from among yourselves, so that you may find tranquility in them, and he has created love and kindness between you. Surely in this there are signs for a people who reflect. What? This verse needs a little explanation and Allah says in the verse number 20 wa min ayati and it is among his sign these are the signs of God an khalaqakum min turabin the sign of God is that he created from the clay first to Adam and Eve and uh, first he created Adam with clay and then he created Eve from the body of the Adam and it is narrated in the verse of prophet or the hadith of prophet uh, and then he have the system of reprocreation and is scattered around the planet. As we know, as we go back about maybe not even 10,000 years, that humanity did not existed on this planet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to this verse. And then this is one of the very important words which we often recite during the wedding ceremony. And all Muslims talk about it. Wamin uh, ayati. Now this is a sign. Be importantly, very important to understand. This is a sign of God. And khalaqalakum min anfusikum azwajan. From your own kind, he created spouses, referring to the woman and for the men and men for the woman. Litaskunu ilayha. So that you may find contentment and peace and tranquility when you visit each other. That is the marital relation. And he created among you a a mawadda. Mawadda is an extreme form of love which spouses have for each other. Wa rahma and a mercy. This is a very beautiful thing to understand. With a marriage and and uh, hold for a man and a woman in the in the relation of a family, then you see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying something very important to understand. If person marries to another person, man marries woman and woman marries man. When they are arranged marriages, they don't even know each other. They born and lived and grew up in certain different family environment and culture. And when these two people get married, they become jala bainakum. He created among you mawadda. You know, before marriage, they did not love. And now after marriage, they become extremely in love with each other, which is a desire to be around and with each other. rahma, And there's a mercy in that. What is that mercy? Understand that if somebody in my neighborhood gets sick, I will say, oh, yeah, please call doctor and take them. And But if my family, my child, my, my spouse gets sick, I have to go and take them to the hospital and to find the doctor to provide them with the food, provide them with the shelter, provide them with the need, pray for their college, pay for their education, make sure they are safe, their other bodily and physical and other spiritual needs become. So this is mawadda, this is the love which has known that when we give to our spouses, we don't expect a return. When we are with each other, we find that if my spouse is not with me or I'm not with the spouse, I feel like, incomplete suddenly this is Allah says wajala this is how he created this kind of love and whole now 8 billion muslim world population whole world even whatever religion faith they live or practice but they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledge the marriage as a legal way of man and woman to come together and that create an extreme love in my experience when people are living together or cohabiting what they call without marriage there is no commitment there is no uh, promise, there's no sense of responsibility and they go out and date with other person and that is kind of extreme um, heartening or hurting and they get affected, especially women are very soft hearted and they are very much sincere in their relationship and when they don't find the man treating them respectfully or with the mercy, with the affection and care and they just get hurt. So this relation of a marriage 
is a very important relation which gives a foundation and a child needs both parents no matter what the psychology and all these things are saying which today we are doing the LGBT and Q and all that it's not the Islamic way Islam does not approve it that's the reality of it but Allah says when the person is the spouse is married to other they create an extreme form of love and a mercy indeed there is a sign for those people who reflect upon it means there is a sign if you see every marriage our parents our forefathers and the humanity all existed before this current generation what they're doing so we should understand that the marriage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once the person get married it is a sign of God this love is a sign of God. Wamin ayatihi. Allah says, it is the sign of God that your spouses are the signs of God. So man should treat his wife and woman should treat her husband as a sign of God. If she's looking or he's looking for sign outside, they should look inside in their marriage. So that they should also seek com comfort with each other. In other words, they should take care of each other to the point where they don't expect. In other words, love is giving without return expected. When you expect something back, that's a trade. So love is not a trade. When our children do something, we give them without expecting them to return back. So whenever we did anything, this is the love is devotion without expectations. And we accept them as they are. The love is also that what we give them, what they need, not what we want to give them. The kindness is not what we want to give. Kindness is what they need. So this is where, again, I'm not going in very nitty gritty detail, but things, what is a human emotional relation is in a family or in a spousal relation. And mercy is that you cannot see a person of your family who is in pain and suffering and go to sleep without thinking about it. It does bother everybody, whoever is married. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in this there is a sign for the nation so that they reflect upon it that their spouses are the signs of God. Listen to the verse number 22. It is about the language and the, and the skin color. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ and among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the difference of your tongues and colors. Surely in this there are signs for the persons having knowledge. This verse also is a very extensive. We can speak on hours and hours about the people, how to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other places. We created you a nation and tribe so you may know each other. And this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is among the signs of God. Again, it is a sign of God. He created the skies and the earth or the planet and the difference between your languages. So all the languages are languages from God. وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ And on the color of your skin. So people have a racial discrimination or the color skin color makes a difference this is Islamic negation of any racism or ethnicity or person's language so for Islam all the languages belong to Allah and we should learn all the language and we should respect and honor because shaitan is not a part of the creation of any of this thing and whatever we have a whispering and our own uh, mental uh, sickness about having a racial discrimination or being thinking I am such and such race I'm superior or I am such and such color and wealth and family heritage prophet says this is ignorance jahiliya that is the that is not Islamic creed we should be very respectful and careful about dealing with others and you may you're not forced to be with anybody but you're not supposed to look down upon anybody in Islam we're supposed to have this thing and you could see in Africa in Asia in other countries where Muslims are they have it espoused with a different race or skin color and they do not mind in America we see we learn the biggest racism which we learn about it and uh, thanks to the people of American uh, African heritage who did the civil war a civil right movement and today people like us of color are living in America and have a right to vote and make living and respected in the neighborhood and again there are going to be always discrimination and not that all Muslim countries are good there is a tremendous amount of discrimination among Muslims and among the racism and uh, is found and the linguistic and ethnic and provincial differences are found in Muslim but Islam says you should live above that. That is Islam, not the Muslim. Muslim could be wrong. Islam is not wrong. We need to learn and need respect. Uh, often Arabs, you know, they used to call non-Arabs Ajim. Ajim means mute, means they have no language. So they were so arrogant about their language. When Prophet conquered open Mecca, 
Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was asked to climb over the Kaaba's roof and make the adhan. And when he was doing it, the uh, Arabs, the pagan Arabs who had recently embraced Islam, they were shocked. They said, this African uh, slave is going to stand over the top of our Kaaba, our Kaaba, they own the Kaaba personally. They thought that this is their property and they said he's going to now, now call people for prayer on top of that. That's a disgrace for them. What reason Abu Jahl was upset with Prophet? He said this man is teaching a message where we will be equal to the slaves. The slaves will be raised up to our status. And many times they would say, we will come and talk to you if you let the slave and poor people distance from you. So Islam is something very, very important to be understood. It, you don't have to put up with people. You don't have to uh, agree with everybody, but you don't have to insult a person. One can say you and I don't get along and that's it. And this is why the divorce is given in Islam that two people will be wonderful, perfect people. They don't get along, they can divorce. That is allowed in Islam. But do not defame, insult, or, or backbite or slander about your spouse or whatever person you have known in your business unless you want to do a business straight so this is counted into the into the uh, riba and uh, what you call the gossiping backbiting and slandering uh, with this we'll listen to the next verse